There's no doubt that we came from Africa. We migrated north, we discovered something new called winter. Oops. This allowed for the portability of fire. You can hollow this mushroom out, put embers of a fire inside, and carry fire for days. If your clan could not rekindle fire in Europe in the winter time, you would die. The forces, the evolutionary forces that are happening are happening across the whole system and co-affecting each other. Our capacity for abstraction leading to tool making like that made us increase our predatory capacity radically faster than the environment could become resilient to our increased predative capacity. But because of that tool making, we could put on clothes and go to the Arctic and become the apex predator there in a way that the lion or the cheetah couldn't leave its environment. So the exponential tech increases our leverage so much that individuals and small groups have the capacity to influence the rest of the human space, but also the biospace in a way that nothing else has. There is no example anywhere in biology of a system that, can, that has the kind of asymmetry relative to its whole environment that we have. Finally, we're in a place where we're doing Wetico to ourselves where we, through technology now, we are trying to extract value from, from humans. And it's almost as if we're all now indigenous people, you know, being uh, uh, supplanted. You know, it's funny, I, I was just thinking about algorithms as demon. We program these little things to understand our weaknesses, to figure out our exploits and then leverage them in order to get us to do things against our own best interests automatically. That's like the definition of a demon. <laughs> that we so devalue humans. You know, Norbert Wiener argued about this in the 50s. He wrote a book called The Human Use of Human Beings. If we teach machines to use us the way we use each other now, all is lost. You know, we're just, we're, we're, we're so self-loathing right now. We so devalue ourselves that uh, it's really, it's gonna take some massive social therapy. I do think a tremendous amount of it is a consequence of, of our inability to keep up with the new technologies of communication. Mm -hmm. They're they're unbelievably powerful, but they seem they seem but they're peculiar, and we don't understand how they work. We don't understand how to protect ourselves against them. We don't even understand what they're doing to us. Now, what does it mean to hack a human being? It means to create an algorithm that can understand you better than you understand yourself. They will just need to know you a little better than you know yourself. Yes, there's a way out of it. I have to think of this in a kind of a mythopoetic frame. That's how it occurs to me is that Technology is empowering our choices, and we are getting something like the power of gods. You have to have something like the love and the wisdom of gods to wield that, or you self-destruct. The whole question for me becomes, how do we make a social system? Like, what is the, the bodhisattva engineering? How do we make a social system that is conditioning not just individual humans, but also collectives to do good choice-making, omnipositive kind of choice-making? Can we make a situation in which we can raise children quite differently? Yes, go to see kids who grew up in an Amazonian tribe and you'll see very different types of human behavior. Could we find adults that would be the most likely to be fast adopters 
of a new system like this incapable? Is that a viable model for a new center? And is that a possible thing to make? <laughs>